It's January in the sugar bush and we're tapping maples. Come on. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. Here's the equipment that we use to uh, get our trees tapped. Uh, for this year, we're going to run uh, close to 200 taps if we have enough time to get them in. Uh, and so to do that, we've got about 4,000 linear feet of tubing. Uh, there's different sizes of tubing. This year, we're using a 3 16 tubing. Uh, which helps to pull natural vacuum through gravity, uh, which increases uh, your yield uh, without having to use any kind of a motorized pump, which is uh, kind of neat. Outside the tubing, we have a variety of different connectors, and it all kind of depends on what your, uh, what your goals are. Um, for us, we have uh, some T's, which we can branch off and connect different trees to each other. Um, there's a, another kind of a T that has a dead end on it, um, so you can kind of cut a line and put it back onto itself if you'd like. Um, there's a, probably a million different ways you can use that too, but they're kind of handy to have uh, some of those laying around. We have a uh, one, of the, one of the coolest um, pieces of equipment are these little inline hooks. And these inline hooks, they hook to the end um, of the tubing, and you bring it around, and you can actually hook the tubing onto itself around a tree, and it serves as an anchor point. Then you can pull all your tension uh, and, and run your, your lateral lines uh, down through your sugar bush. Uh, the spouts that we're using this year, we've switched up, and now we're, we're going down to a 3 16th spout um, to also kind of increase the, the natural um, vacuum uh, using gravity. Um, so to tap a 3 16th spout, we're using a 1964 drill bit, and we, and we have it taped off at an inch and a half um, to help us keep those depths uh, correct. Uh, a set of tubing cutters is kind of handy. It makes a nice, quick, clean cut. Um, it's kind of handy more so than using a pair of scissors or a pocket knife or side cuts. It does a good job of making a clean cut. And of course, you're going to need some kind of a hammering apparatus to uh, tap the spout um, into the tree. And uh, that's really all it takes. It's not super complicated at all. Uh, it just takes getting the parts, uh, taking a look at them, and then rigging it up um, for the, the, the lay of your land there. Once you get everything tapped and you have your ends, you have to collect the sap somehow. Um, this year we're going to use uh, uh, big blue water drums, some five gallon buckets, and probably also uh, an IBC tote. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, you could simply just drill into a tree, tap it, and then um, run tubing out of the tree down to a five gallon bucket. Uh, and if you want to do something like that, you can real easy um, just get these little rubber grommets, these little O-rings, uh, and drill the hole into the top part of a bucket lid. Um, or, or anything and then you can just slip the tubing right through it creates like a nice airtight um, Connection uh, to get your sap all the way to um, a five gallon bucket Okay, we're at the very top of the sugar bush at our anchor tree We're going to use this tree to pull tension on for our sap line and run our sap line all the way down and around uh, To where we're actually going to collect the sap uh, So to do that we're going to have an end line hook and a sap line and those connect like this. Then we're going to wrap the sap line around the tree. And back onto itself. And now we've got a strong anchor point and we're going to run the sap line all the way down.
Okay, we're at the very bottom of the sugar bush here and we've got our anchor post. We have our line ran all the way up to the top. We've made sure that everything is uh, continually dropping uh, in elevation from the very top all the way to the bottom here. And we have a few connections that we've made. Uh, first, we've got everything pulled tight. We're using another end line hook. And we're gonna hook it back onto itself. That's keeping the tension here all the way to the very top. From here, we have a T uh, that's going into uh, a little bit of a manifold that goes down into our holding tank. We have it uh, anchored off, it's nice and tight. We have it teed to get the sap uh, into uh, our barrel here. And then we're teed off here just above our connection uh, that'll eventually go to another set. Uh, the reason why we have all of this complicated connection here is when we need to switch barrels and add a new one to refresh this, we can just use the quick connect and pop this off. If we pop this off, we can move this barrel, bring in another one, and then just put it right back and reconnect without kind of have to take in, without taking any of these uh, components apart. So it keeps everything uh, airtight, sealed up, and uh, we're, we're good to go. So now we're gonna make our way um, up to our lowest tree and start tapping from there and work our way all the way up to the sugar bush to the very top. So let's go up top and start tapping some trees. Uh, we want to tap on the south side so it warms up early in the day. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put this up here. We have our tape inch and a half off our bit. We're gonna tap at an upward angle. Use a low speed. Clean that real good. We're gonna set our tap in. We'll keep doing this until we get all of our trees tapped. And uh, here in about two days or so, we should start having some flow. So uh, we'll check back in here uh, after we get a couple more of these trees tapped in. It's January 19th and the sap is just starting to run. I've got a bunch of cinder blocks that are kind of stacked up, creating a big, uh, big box. And then I've got these uh, steamer pans just kind of set in on top. This is a finished pan that I'll uh, finish my sap in. But you just make a concrete box. Um, the front side's open. You'll feed the fire through this way and make your concrete blocks and go all the way around and then enclose your back. But it's just a box made out of concrete blocks the fire underneath and then at some point in the in the box you'll take a cinder block and turn it on its side so the holes are facing out like right here and then I have stovepipe just kind of poke through this is like four inch uh, that goes to six inch here and I just poke it through this goes into the fire box and I just use clay and just seal it up so all the smoke goes underneath and then out the chimney pipe and the chimney pipe is just going up and outside of the workshop here. One of the tricks when you're uh, cooking down sap for syrup is that liquid boils and as the moisture evaporates uh, and the closer and closer to a higher sugar content it gets, it makes little bubbles. Uh, those bubbles turn into froth and if you're not careful that froth will overrun and uh, leave your pans and leaving your syrup all over the ground. So one thing old timers did to prevent that is they use butter. So you can take a stick of butter and run it. Right down through the froth. And look at that. It's taking that foam right down. So when you're out making syrup, make sure you have a stick of butter waiting and then I'll just go ahead and just, just dip that through all the last of the pans. And that'll help that foam stay down. 
So as we were cooking down on these pans here, what we're doing is piggybacking. Uh, right now, our last pan, this is the very last of the sap that we have, and this pan's, uh, there's only a little bit in it. What we do is we add the warmed up sap to these hotter pans. We only add the sap to the pans that are boiling, and that keeps things moving way faster. We're not losing any time uh, from a whole entire pan uh, that, that's cooling off. Uh, it's The pans stay hot, we're adding a little bit at a time, and that, that tends to work real well for us, cooking down a lot of sap real quick. Now eventually, this we're gonna be completely run out and this pan's gonna be empty. Once we do that, we'll add, we'll just put water in this pan. That way the pan doesn't overheat and we can keep our heat sink all the way across. Now, we'll do the same thing for this pan and this pan. And once we're down just to these two pans, what we'll do is this will go into here and we'll take all these pans off. And then our coal bed that's underneath, we'll push that all up underneath of our finish pan. And then all we have to do is babysit the coals under our finish pan. That way we can slow it down, uh, speed it up to make sure we don't burn the syrup. Um, and it's a, it's a nice easy way to kind of maintain that fire as we cook it down. One of the most important things to uh, cook and sap down in a timely manner is to keep that fire steady and constant. Uh, what you don't want to do is build a nice set hot of coals and then start overloading it with wood and then choking it out, cooling the pans off. So keep that hot steady heat all the way through. Sometimes when you add big slabs like this, it can start to cool your cool your fire off. One thing that we do to help keep that moving is we use an air mover. We can just have it here angled right towards the firebox. We kick it on. And we'll get those coals real good and hot. And that'll help light off anything that we just put in, keep that heat steady. And that really helps to keep that sap rolling. One thing we do to help keep a steady heat all the way through here is when we're first starting off the fire, we'll actually build it underneath of these two pans here. And we'll go ahead and lay out all of our wood and stack it up kind of TP style all the way down through here. Once this fire is lit in this area here, we'll use this door underneath the finish pan and then we can force air on this side using an air mover. And that helps almost make a forge and blows that fire all the way down through, lighting all the wood through here. And then before you know it, you have a fire from here all the way down, and it makes it way easier to get it hot quick, but also to keep to maintain that heat. But eventually, when we get all of our sap down in this finish pan, with having a block there that we can just open up, we can also just start feeding the fire underneath this way. And that'll help us maintain steady heat right under our finish pan. Okay, we're gonna check and see how close we are by using a hydrometer. On this finish pan, we have uh, a valve and we have a little collection cup and a hydrometer. And Susan's gonna go ahead and open up the spout there. And we're gonna just watch it fill. When it is maple syrup viscosity, it'll float to right there. See where it says hot test 211? When it's hot coming off, when, it, when your hydrometer floats at that line, then you're ready to go. And so right now, we have a little bit of ways to go, and we're gonna keep cooking. Okay, we're getting real close. It's starting to foam up a little bit. The bubbles are getting really, really, really tight. It's starting to smell really good in here. All right. We're at the red line, right at 211. Now we've got syrup. Time to get it filtered.